In this video, you will learn the lab steps of processing of provisional acrylic partial dentures. Trim away stone teeth. This step is done to remove unnecessary undercuts and to facilitate subsequent procedures. However, a limitation of doing this step is that lab remount will not be possible as all the occlusal surfaces of teeth are gone and you're going to need to do occlusal adjustment clinically. Separate the master cast from the mounting plate by using a point of force application using gypsum knife and gently tapping the hammer at the junction of the mounting plate and the mounting plaster followed by tapping at the junction of the master cast and the mounting plaster. Check the dental flask. Remember that they should be kept in a good condition. Assembled flask should not rock when forces are applied. There should always be a solid metal-to-metal -metal contact between the flask components. In addition to checking the flask, apply petroleum jelly on the inner surface of the flask. This prevents oxidation, which can alter the fit of the components. A thin layer of petroleum jelly should be placed on the internal surface of the flask before beginning the investment process. This prevents pitting of the surface and facilitates removal of the stone mold. Note that there must be approximately 15 mm of clearance between the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and the top of the flask's middle segment. A mix of type 2 dental stone is prepared and placed into the lower portion of the flask. The cast is then settled into the flask and depressed until the land area of the cast is even with or slightly below the rim of the flask. The investing stone should be even with the land area of the cast. When the stone begins to harden, it is trimmed and smoothened with a plaster knife under running tap water. A care must be taken to ensure that the surface of the investing stone does not exhibit any mechanical undercuts. Note that the abutment teeth should be totally covered with dental plaster and the rot wire clasps should be embedded inside the dental stone. After the final set of the first investment layer, a gypsum separating medium, in this case we used petroleum jelly, is painted to all exposed stone surfaces. The second investment layer is prepared using type 3 dental stone. The stone is applied onto the wax and the prosthetic teeth. Care is taken not to trap air bubbles around the necks of the teeth. At this stage, the middle portion of the flask is positioned and the stone is vibrated into the flask. The top of the flask is then pressed into the place immediately and the flask is set aside for a minimum of one hour before wax elimination process is begun. The flask is placed in boiling water at 91 Celsius for 10 minutes.
Carefully remove the flask from the de-waxing machine. Open the flask using a gypsum knife. The upper portion of the flask is lifted as vertically as possible to avoid fracturing of the investment layers. The softened wax and the temporary denture base are removed from the flask. Note that the clasps should stay attached to the abutment teeth. The remaining wax is flushed from the mold using boiling water. While the flask is still warm, one coat of sodium alginate separating medium is applied. Make sure that the separating medium is not applied to the ridge lap areas of the artificial teeth. Apply a second coat of cold mold seal or sodium alginate on the fitting surface of the cast. Apply resin monomer on the clasps and the ridge lap areas of the artificial teeth to facilitate chemical bond. Manufacturer's recommendations for mixing should be closely followed. Polymer monomer ratio is usually 3 to 1 by volume. Components are measured and polymer and monomer are mixed for 30 seconds or until the polymer is thoroughly wet with the monomer. Cover the mixing jar and check the resin every 30 seconds until the resin reaches a dough-like consistency. At this point, resin should separate cleanly from the walls of the mixing jar and when pulled, the material should snap apart. Upon reaching this stage, resin should be introduced to the mold. The packing process should be accomplished as quickly as possible. It is important to note that the resin should not be handled with bare fingers. During the mixing and packing phases, disposable gloves should be worn. Resin mixture is pressed into and around the teeth in one portion of the flask. A plastic sheet is placed between the portions of the flask and then it's closed. The flask is placed into a hydraulic press and pressure is applied. The resin is given sufficient time to flow. If sufficient resin is used, there should be flash around all margins of the denture base. If flash is not present around the margins, a small portion of resin is added to the deficient area before the next trial packing. The flash is trimmed to the margins of the denture base using a small spatula or another small blunt instrument. Trial packing is repeated until a minimal amount of flash is present. Under normal circumstances, at least three trial closures should be accomplished. After trial closure has been made, the flask is permitted to bench cure for one hour before processing is started. The long cure cycle involves placement of the denture flask and the carrier into a curing unit filled with room temperature water. The water temperature is raised slowly to reach 74 Celsius in one hour. The temperature is maintained for additional seven hours. At the end of this period, the water is brought to a boil 
and maintained for additional 30 minutes. Recovery of a prosthesis from the denture flask requires thought and patience. The stone mold is first removed from the flask itself. In turn, the layers of investment are carefully removed. Gross irregularities are removed by acrylic finishing burr, followed by a smaller diameter carbide burr. The use of pumice is to reduce the scratches or defects in the surface of the acrylic resin and it must be performed with great care because pumice can rapidly reduce the surface of the resin. Chorus pumice has little or no indication in the finishing process. The rationale for polishing is to make little scratches out of big scratches. This progression should always be kept in mind. The fineness of the polishing instrument or material increases as the polishing procedure progresses. The final polish is always attained with the finest abrasive available. Note that as you're polishing the acrylic resin, you need to hold it with both hands against the wheel. Minimal pressure should be applied. And be careful not to over polish because this might thin out the acrylic material and weaken the denture base. 